Hi, my name is Kathy. And my name is Sakali. We're part of this year's Music Monday video. Well, throat singing uh, was usually traditionally done by two women facing each other, imitating sounds that they would hear around them, and it was done while the men were out hunting. Um, so women would be back at the camp and they would be uh, doing a lot of um, chores around the camp and they would often th sing together and throat singing is considered a game so um, it became very competitive at times and usually the first person who stopped or laughed first was the loser of the game. And there are other types of singing in Inuit culture. Um, there's uh, songs that are made specifically for each child. Like the mother or a close relative will make a song and that child will have that song sung to them um, throughout their life, even when they're grown. There are songs of competition. Um, I think there might be songs of mourning, just many different kinds of traditional songs. And then, as far as music, um, you know, of course, young Inuit have adopted all the many different kinds of music that um, have traveled to the north since since music from the outside world was first introduced. Well, throat singing, Inuit throat singing is a very oral tradition, so it's not something that you can go to school for. Um, you have to know somebody who knows how to throat sing, who is interested in teaching you and also has the time to be able to do it. So it's something that's passed down between teachers to students. Yeah, the traditional way of learning is just by observing. So, um, you know, we live in a modern world where you get very busy and you have to have, like sometimes some of the communities they have specific classes. I know in my home community of Kuchak, they have specific classes, like not in school, but to teach young kids. Um, but like probably our generation, we had to go and seek somebody out and learn from them. And But any other kind of things that we would learn, like if you're making Inuit clothing or if you're learning how to um, fish or things like that, you have to just observe and try. Um, I learned from my sister um, about 20 years ago, I'd say, uh, when we were, when she started out learning before I did. And I learned from her and a couple of um, elders from Havonitup. And then I just took some classes at a cultural center here in Ottawa and learned from friends and family members. I learned from a friend, um, actually when I came south for school. When I was a child there were you no know, throat singers in the community where I lived. We saw it on TV and we used to just make kind of funny sounds like like he, ha, oh, he, like we just tried to imitate it anyhow because we had nobody to show us. Um, so then when I, I came south for school, a friend of mine was already throat singing and there were not that many at that time. And she showed a few sounds and she told me and another friend to listen to CDs and just try to make any kind of sound and then come back and we could do some of the sounds. I would say that throat singing is an Inuit tradition that is part of what makes our culture strong. It's very much part of our heritage and part of our identity. So the more Inuit who know how to throat sing and are able to share our culture with others, the stronger our culture is. It's a traditional game and it's mostly women who do it, although there are some men. It includes some melodic sounds and some guttural sounds that we make by controlling our throat, but also with our diaphragm. Um, we're doing exactly the same sounds, uh, just syncopated, the opposite each other. And um, 
the game is uh, you want to make the other person stop either by laughing or running out of breath. Um, usually laughing, you'll end up seeing throat singers laughing at the end of each song. And the songs are supposed to imitate sounds you would hear in the north, such as the wind, um, the river, sometimes animals, birds. I've heard somebody do one that's a bumblebee. Um, there's one that we do, it's called Dog and Polar Bear, and it's supposed to sound like a dog and a polar bear. So many different things. And of course, some people have their own that they've made up, but a lot of times um, the ones that we do are just very traditional that most people know. Join us on May 1st, 2017, as Canada celebrates the power of music in our lives. Go to musicmonday.ca for more information. Canada lives music. Let's, Let's sing, sing it together. together. And the world gets small every day. And sometimes our silence gets in the way. When the voices are weak and so far away.